All right, we're going to continue on with our uh, muscle contraction story here. And um, so I've already mentioned to you that when uh, skeletal muscle fibers contract, the contractions that generate the force that you need for movements, remember those thin filaments and those thick filaments? I've already kind of mentioned this to you. Thin filaments mainly built from actin, but you've got some other proteins in there as well. Thick filaments built from myosin. And what they're going to do is, in order for contraction to take place, they slide across each other. They're proteins that do this sliding. So because of that, they're called sliding filaments. And this um, model for how what actually happens when your muscles contract is called the sliding filament model of muscle contraction. All right, so just a few highlights here about the sliding filament model. So in a, when, your skeletal, when a skeletal muscle is relaxed, so the muscle fibers, the muscle cells in there are relaxed, your thin and your thick filaments, they overlap a little bit like this. So this would be thin filament maybe up here, thick one here, and then you'd also have a thin filament down in here. The thick ones are sandwiched in between thin filaments. And then also keep in mind, this is something that's happening in three dimensions. So a lot of these diagrams look like they're in 2D, but just remember your sarcomeres, the bundles of these thin and thick filaments, are actually three-dimensional structures. So what we're going to see that, um, well, how do these things, how does this sliding take place? Remember those two-headed snakes, the double heads there, the myosin heads on the thick filaments? What they're going to do is they're going to attach to a thin filament. If my uh, forearm here is a thin filament, they're going to attach and then make a movement like this. And then they detach. Um, the little myosin heads get cocked. They reattach like this. And then they make a motion like that. And that happens over and over and over again. And as it does, um, thin filaments slide across the thick ones. And that's happening over at each end of a sarcomere. You've got this shortening that's taking place as those thin and thick filaments walk across each other. And again, that's what's going to lead to contraction. And as I mentioned before, if you have sarcomeres shortening, sarcomeres are the individual um, subunits of myofibrils. So a whole myofibrils are going to shorten. And then a muscle cell or muscle fiber is basically a bundle of a bunch of myofibrils. So that means the whole muscle fiber is going to shorten. And then when you have a whole bunch of muscle cells or muscle fibers within an entire muscle that are contracting at the same time, then the whole muscle is going to wind up shortening. So those are the highlights of what we call the sliding filament model of contraction. Okay, so the little thing I was just doing with my uh, forearm in my hand to uh, demonstrate what was happening, here it is drawn out for you in a diagram uh, type format. And we're not going to get into the nitty gritty details for how this happens yet, because we will as we move further along in the lecture. But um, what they're showing you here, okay, so up here you've got a, there's a thin filament, and down here's a thick one. And just keep in mind, you've really got bundles of a whole bunch of these in every sarcomere. And then there's one myosin head that they're showing you. And there's really two of those heads there together. All right, so when a uh, sarcomere, when you're going to have sliding that takes place, the myosin head actually has to be in contact with the thin filament that they're showing you there. And then notice this. Notice how the head, the myosin head, did this, like it was being, um, that's called the power stroke. The myosin head pivots like this, and as it does it, it drags the thin filament that way. So that's what's actually happening as a contraction occurs. And then that myosin head has to come off, it has to detach, and then it gets re-cocked, you know, almost like you're cocking a trigger on a gun. It gets re-cocked. Gets re it moves back this way. 
And guess what? That takes energy to cock the trigger of the myosin heads like that. Um, where does that energy come from? Our friend ATP is going to be used to provide that energy for cocking the myosin head. And then the myosin head reattaches to the uh, thin filament, and then you just keep doing the same cycle over and over again. Then the, the trigger gets pulled, and the head does its pivot, or what they call the power stroke, to make that happen. And so as that's occurring, you've got pivot, comes off, recocks, attaches, pivot, comes off, recocks, attaches, pivot, and that's how the sliding takes place. Now, of course, this is taking place um, almost instantaneously, which is what allows you to have very smooth movements and contractions with your, uh, with your muscles. And again, well, we're going to return to that story. So don't worry about getting too heavy into the details yet. All right, so um, now what is required for skeletal muscle contraction? to take place? What stimulates all of this to happen? What's different when a skeletal muscle cell or a muscle fiber is relaxed versus when it's contracting? Um, first of all, a skeletal muscle has to be activated. You've got to have input from the nervous system. And that input comes from cells called motor neurons. These are cells of the nervous system that are going to stimulate muscle a muscle fiber and basically telling it to contract. The motor neuron is going to tell a skeletal muscle cell to contract. And this communication between a motor neuron and a skeletal muscle that allows contraction to occur is called excitation contraction coupling, which is kind of sounds like a mouthful. Try not to get too scared by the terminology in this unit. If you just kind of break it down and don't let it overwhelm you, it makes sense. So excitation, contraction, coupling, a motor neuron has to excite. We said uh, muscle tissues are excitable. They can receive stimuli signals from motor neurons. And then that signaling leads to the actual contraction that takes place. And we're going to learn about the story for how that happens. That signaling includes something called an action potential which is basically an electrical impulse. Again, don't be scared by the term action potential. We're going to talk more about what that means. And it's, uh, it's not scary. And also, we mentioned that calcium ions are involved. A brief rise in intracellular calcium ion levels actually is what leads to the actins and the myosins coming together and having that walking, that sliding that takes place. So that's just kind of giving you a preview of some of the things we're going to be talking about as we move through this unit. All right, so we said you got to have motor neurons um, exciting skeletal muscle fibers in order for them to go through the contraction process, that sliding filament process. So what is a motor neuron? Now, this is where we're going to wind up um, jumping over into chapter 11 as well. So I've got chapter 9 physiology on here, but really we're going to be getting into some chapter 11 info as well, which is fine because uh, we may as well go over it now and then you won't have as much to learn in um, unit 5 if we go ahead and cover it now. So we're going to um, start talking about these motor neurons and what they are and how do they generate these electrical impulses that lead to um, muscle fibers contracting. We'll start uh, discussing that information in the next video lecture clip.